hello welcome back to my channel i am very excited as you can see i've done a little redecorating may have to move this shelf down a little bit maybe we'll we'll figure it out but i'm very excited about about all my little bits and pieces that are coming together if you are new here welcome i'm gonna make it really really easy for you to catch up on all of my other f1 chit chat videos by putting a link somewhere up here for you to click on and if you're not already subscribed i mean what what on earth are you waiting for let's just Let's just go ahead and hit the subscribe button and you know what it means you'll never ever miss a video and i drop them weekly go ahead and do it i have a question for you viewers in this week's video and that question is what comes to mind when i say the words best british f1 duo of all time i'm gonna give you a second to to ruminate on that because we're going to take a trip through the F1 history books and take a look at what I believe are the top five best ever all British F1 driver duos, tongue twister. And there's also, you know, some surprising pairings. There was actually an all British driver lineup at Ferrari back in 1957. Who knew? I did not. But as you're thinking about who you're going to predict will come up in this video, let's get into it. I'm going to give an honourable mention to the Mercedes duo this year of Lewis Hamilton and George Russell because they are obviously an all British driver pairing, but we don't know what's happening with Lewis. We don't know how much longer he's going to be in the sport. If you want my opinions on that, I'll also put the video that I have made about whether or not he's going to retire up here, but we just don't know. So I think if these two were to be paired up for, let's say even two or more seasons, which Lewis definitely, he's still within the age range to do it, like Kimi Raikkonen has proven that just recently, I think they could really... They could really be up there with one of the best all British duos in Formula One if they could get some time under their belts and if they could manage to be collaborative instead of fiery. So I'm going to give them an honourable mention, but as they have not yet driven together, we won't be giving them a ranking as part of the rest of the video. Believe it or not, there have actually only been just over 10 all British driver duos in the history of F1. So that's from way back at the beginning in 1950. So what I've done is I have gone through all of them. I've looked at their results. I've looked at how they partnered together. And what I've come up with is my top five. So we are gonna run through that. And at the very end, you get to drop a comment down below and tell me who you would pick. Would it be one of my top five or would it be someone entirely different that's up to you. I love hearing your opinions. Let's hang out in the comments afterwards. First duo is Jensen Button and Lewis Hamilton. Now, I was almost surprised by how far back in the history books I had to go to find the most recent British driver duo that wasn't Lewis and George. And it's Jensen and Lewis. And that was back in 2010 to 2012. So we're talking a 10 year gap, which is pretty interesting. The story of Jensen and Lewis is almost infamous at this point. Um, they really didn't get along as teammates when they were at McLaren. So they, they were there together for three seasons. Jensen had literally just won the 2009 World Championship with Braun. And he then moved, which surprised a lot of people, over to McLaren in 2010 and Lewis was already there. He was kind of like the Lando Norris of the time in terms of being with the team for years, had developed his young career there and was already really successful at that stage, even though he was so young. And it just, the two of those things together just did not make for a particularly good dynamic. And Jensen has spoken a couple of times about how the atmosphere was at McLaren during that time. And, he essentially was coming into a team that was really heavily focused on Lewis and had been for, for a couple of years at that point. And interestingly, Jensen, rather than sort of rebelling against that or isolating himself, he kind of went about trying to bring the team around him and around his side of the garage. And it seemed like he was successful at the time. I remember Lewis 
kind of complaining quite a bit that the team were favoring Jensen in certain circumstances during races and things like that. And I think that really bothered Lewis because he had really grown up with the team and he felt like it was enough eventually that he did then leave McLaren and go to Mercedes back in 2013. Now, having said all of that, they did actually manage to get 17 wins together in the three seasons that they both raced for McLaren. So they are technically the most successful all British driver duo in the history of F1 with that number of wins. But you do kind of have to think that if these two spent less time battling each other on track and potentially some mind games off track, that maybe they actually could have achieved a bit more. All right, so we're gonna jump way back in time bear with me here we're gonna go back from 2012 all the way back to the very beginning of f1 and we're gonna talk about the van wall pairing of sterling moss and tony brooks who raced together uh, at van wall from 1957 to 1958 so they had two seasons together and it's actually kind of mad when you hear these numbers given there's over 60 years of a gap here in what we're talking about, but bear with me. We've just spoken about Lewis and Jensen winning 17 races across three seasons together in, let's call it the relatively recent past. And Moss and Brooks managed to win 10 races in their time together as teammates over the course of just two seasons. And this is in the 1950s. Things were dangerous, unpredictable, you were racing in Formula One, but you were also racing in a bunch of other categories and things were things were kind of crazy at that time. And to be honest, I think that makes that pairing of Moss and Brooks even more impressive to me. And it also officially makes them the second most successful all British driver pairing of all time, which is pretty awesome. Right, this one is a very strange case because the third group in in this ranking actually involves not two but three drivers so this was because of some interesting developments at Williams back in 1994 and 1995. At the start of that season they of course had Damon Hill and the great Ayrton Senna in their two seats and then unfortunately Ayrton Senna did pass away during the season that year and what that meant is that David Coulthard who had been the Williams test driver at the time, stepped in to take Senna's seat. However, later on that year, the powers that be in Formula One, aka Bernie Eccleston, decided that it was not a good look for Formula One to have absolutely no current or former world champions whatsoever racing in the sport that season after Senna had passed. So they essentially kind of convinced or told Williams that they were going to have to bring back Nigel Mansell, who had left the sport in 1992 to pursue racing in the US and was actually tied into a contract, which apparently Bernie Eccleston pulled strings to get him out of. And Mansell then came in and took Coulthard's seat that he had just taken over from Ayrton Senna. So a lot of weird things going on here. And Mansell actually did end up winning when he came back which sort of makes it even even stranger but with all that being said things did calm down in the 1995 season where Coulthard and Damon Hill were sort of the, the staple drivers in the Williams team and the strangeness around Mansell had sort of disappeared and over the course of the two seasons between the three of them not the two of them the drivers had contributed to a total of seven race wins as far as i can make out because it's complicated for williams and that makes them the third most successful all british driver trio in f1 history Okay, so this is number four in this ranking of our top five and we're talking about Jim Clark and Graham Hill. We're hopping back in time yet again to 1967-1968 for those two seasons where they were teammates at Lotus and if you're wondering it's not a coincidence that the surname Hill has come up twice. We've just been talking about Damon Hill who is actually the son of Graham Hill and as a matter of fact 
they were the first father-son duo to both win an F1 Drivers World Championship, which I'm not really sure if there's a cooler family record to put your name to, that's absolutely awesome. But as far as Clark and Hill, they were really, they really had like a great camaraderie as teammates and Hill actually won the World, the world Championship in 1968, but it was a really bittersweet year for the team because Jim Clark, unfortunately, earlier in the season had passed away in a driving incident at the Nürburgring. So Graham Hill actually dedicated the championship that he won that year to Jim Clark. And kind of in the two seasons that they were together as teammates, Hill actually didn't manage to win any races while he was partnered with Jim Clark, but Clark won five. So as a duo, that makes them the fourth most successful all British F1 driver lineup in history. All right, here we are, number five on the list, the last one. And Graham Hill is getting another mention because he was partnered up with Jackie Stewart from 1965 to 1966 and they were both driving for BRM at the time and 1965, if you can believe it, was actually Jackie Stewart's rookie year in Formula One and it just blows my mind because I've been watching F1 literally for 20 years now and I feel like Jackie Stewart and his signature tartan trousers are just timeless, like they will just always be there and he's just, he's such a fantastic, character in the sport and he has never ever got away and his sort of passion has never dwindled which is really cool but I digress the Stewart and Hill duo managed to win four races in their time together and that makes them the fifth most successful partnership of all British drivers in F1 history and of course they both became absolute household names as well as far as the sport goes by the end of their respective careers. Okay, that's all I've got for you for this week's video. I am very curious as always to hear your opinions. Are you picking one of the top five that I've mentioned for your favorite duo? Are you picking another one entirely? Whichever the case may be, drop me a comment. I will be hanging out with you all replying there once the video goes live. I think personally, I'm gonna have to go for Sterling Moss and Tony Brooks. I think the time that they achieved their success in and the extent of the success that they had is just, just so impressive. Um, but again, curious to hear your thoughts and until the next video, take care and don't forget to give this video a like if you learn something new. Chat to you all soon.